Uh, welcome to uh, the article feedback presentation. My name is Fabrice Florin, and uh, I'm a uh, new with uh, first time at Wikimania. Uh, I did my first edit in 2006, but uh, I didn't really start seriously editing until uh, uh, last year. And I have joined the Wiki, Ma sorry, the Wikimedia Foundation uh, about nine months ago to help develop and uh, product manage uh, the article feedback tool. Um, and my own background is I'm a former television producer, uh, produced about 90% uh, of MTV's news in the early 80s. I worked at Apple Computer where we helped launch multimedia. Uh, I worked at uh, Macromedia where uh, I ran a large site called shockwave.com, a web entertainment site. And then my last venture uh, was a nonprofit organization called News Trust, which helped people find good journalism online. Uh, and I'm delighted to be now working with the Wikipedia community and tell you a little bit more about the art article feedback project. Um, so in its simplest form, what we're trying to do with article feedback is uh, to um, uh, enable readers to uh, give suggestions and uh, Hmm, seems like I've got a little stuck here. So um, I'm sorry for the uh, technical interruption. Uh, but yeah, the first version of article feedback used uh, simple ratings. Uh, that was before my time. And uh, the reaction that we got from the community in general is that it didn't seem to be effective in terms of uh, providing useful feedback to the editors. Because often people would rate an article and give it uh, five stars, not because the article was necessarily of high quality, but because they liked the topic. Um, and also, it didn't really provide very valuable feedback to the editors uh, because, well, they got a numeric uh, rating, but they didn't know what the person thought was right or wrong. So one of the first things that we did uh, when I first took the job in, uh, in, in October, okay, we're back, fantastic. Um, was uh, to, um, hold on a second, let me finish this, turn off the mic. So one of the first things that we did uh, was ask the community what they thought we should have done instead. <laughs> and uh, some of the things that we heard right away is that people wanted to see comments so that they could actually see what the uh, reader was uh, meaning to say. And uh, also a lot of other good uh, community suggestions came uh, through the uh, uh, this process of reaching out. And as a result, uh, my hope is that we've uh, been able to develop a product that will be more useful to uh, Wikipedia editors. In its simplest form, the article Feedback V5 enables readers to give suggestions and uh, editors can then make improvements based on those suggestions. It seems really simple, but it's uh, apparently a pretty effective way to, number one, engage Added, uh, readers to become more active participants, and then second, to uh, provide uh, a tool that could potentially be useful to editors in terms of improving their articles. And then the last but possibly most important aspect of this tool is it could potentially uh, enable some collaborations between readers and editors, between newbies and experienced uh, Wikipedians. So what I'd like to do is give you a quick little demonstration. Um, and uh, we're going to go to this page, which is a, a, a sam sample article that we've been using a lot to, uh, to test this concept. So uh, when, as a reader, when you're looking at an article like this and you see something that is potentially missing, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and you see this little form here that invites you to improve the page and asks you, did you find what you were looking for? So here I'm going to say no, and I'm going to say um, uh, would like to hear the bird's song. And um, I uh, hit post your feedback, and I get a little thank you message that my uh, feedback has been posted here, and I'm invited to edit the page. Uh, a lot of readers don't even realize that they're able to edit. Uh, so essentially, it acts as a call to action to uh, provide a little bit of feedback, give a little comment, and then edit the page if they want to. Now, if I want to see where my feedback has been posted, I can just click on that link here, and it takes me to the feedback page where my comment 
is highlighted at the top. And I can see all sorts of other comments that are coming in. Um, and um, if I want to, I can look at the most relevant comments. Those are comments that have been featured by other editors um, that provide suggestions that uh, could be useful to uh, the authors of this page. Um, and um, <coughs> we're going to see in a moment how uh, these uh, uh, articles can be featured. So, for example, let's say that um, I'm going to go back to all comments. And um, let's see if we can find something uh, interesting that hasn't been featured yet. Um, well, let's see. Uh, most of the stuff has been featured already. Uh, but let's say, for example, that we thought that this one was a good one. I can just hit this button that says Feature This Post. I can add a little note, and then the article will then be featured. And uh, this means that uh, when a reader views the page for the first time, they see the most relevant filter. So all the comments that have been marked as featured or that have been marked as helpful um, can uh, be seen first in that list. So for example, uh, you know, if, uh, if I find this particular uh, comment useful, I can press uh, the thumbs up and that will move it up a little bit further down the list. So that is the view that a uh, editor sees. But there's also another view, which is um, available to uh, uh, what we call monitors. And I'll, show, I'll go back to the slides to kind of show you how this works. Unfortunately, the slides are a little bit uh, off, but uh, we'll, we'll just uh, go through them anyway. So here's an example of the feedback page for the readers. And you can see that it doesn't have any of the tools on the right that you just saw in the demonstration but they can use the thumbs up and thumbs down button. So readers can actually help pre-moderate the page, if you will. But if you are a, an editor, you actually have access to the tool that allow you to feature articles or to mark them as resolved if the issue has been resolved. And of course, you can view the activity, see what other people thought of that particular comment. Now, if you are a rollbacker or an administrator or reviewer, you have access to special tools which are enable you to hide a post that's particularly offensive, or you can even request oversight. So ask an oversighter if you think that this comment should be permanently removed. But the hide tool will immediately uh, make it possible for, it basically remove it from the list so that uh, readers won't be exposed to um, a material that's uh, uh, awkward. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. The, the readers give suggestions on the article page and the editors can make improvements, typically going to the feedback page. And there's a pretty easy way to get to the feedback page, which is um, uh, <clears throat> looking back at the, um, hold on. My, um, so um, you can always go back to the article from the feedback page. And if you uh, are an editor and you have an article and you want to see if, it, if there's feedback, click on the talk page and there'll be a view reader feedback button um, right next to the title of the talk page that will allow you to go to the feedback page. Uh, right now, we only have the, ar the, the article feedback installed on about 3% of the English Wikipedia. We're starting with the English Wikipedia first because um, you've got to start somewhere, and uh, once we're done deploying uh, to the English Wikipedia, we'll make it available to other uh, Wikipedia projects as well. Um, but essentially, uh, this is the way that you find out uh, if there is feedback for your article. It's just go to the talk page. You can also, if you want to, scroll down to the bottom of any feedback page, and there's a link there that says see more feedback from other pages, and that takes you to the central feedback page, where you can see comments from all across Wikipedia. Um, so that's pretty useful um, if you're interested in uh, helping patrol some of these, um, uh, some of these articles uh, you know, across the entire uh, Wikipedia. Yep? Can you search the, the feedback thing by keywords? Uh, we have not yet implemented the, um, the keyword search, but you certainly can use the, your browser's keyword search to, to do some searches on the, on the central page. Great, thanks. So um, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the research. 
uh, that led us to uh, develop this product in the way that you see it today. Um, we really wanted to um, uh, go out of our way to try to base many of our decisions on actual data. Um, so we posed uh, three questions. Um, first, is article feedback an effective way to engage readers to contribute? Second, is, art feed is article feedback useful for improving Wikipedia? And then last, can posting feedback convert readers into editors? So we did uh, a number of studies to try to answer these three research questions, and I'm going to give you some quick findings for each of those. Um, first, the overall results is we got about 160,000 feedback posts in the first six months since we started testing, and that was only on 0.65% of the English encyclopedia for six months. Um, and based on those results, uh, we found that about 70% of the feedback posts have comments, 98% are from anonymous users, 70% um, are uh, generally positive, so when, when we uh, surveyed the uh, the readers, they really enjoyed having this opportunity to provide feedback, even though they didn't feel comfortable editing yet. Um, so it appears from these early findings that article feedback can engage readers to contribute, which is uh, very encouraging. And in fact, um, yep? No, this is, we're talking about article feedback five, so it's a new system. All of this data is for the past six months. And our plan is to retire the old feedback system when we go to 100% of English Wikipedia in uh, September. Uh, so we're right now at 3%, and we're going to gradually increase all the way to 100% in September. So you're going to start seeing these feedback tools appear more and more. Um, the projected volume uh, based on this research is that we anticipate about 1.2 million feedback posts per month which is cons you know, a, a significant number if you consider that there's about 2.1 million edits per month. Um, so it's, um, it certainly is likely to um, engage a lot of readers. Um, the, the second question that we pose ourselves is, is this feedback useful? So we worked with 20 experienced Wikipedians, and uh, we asked them to review 900 random posts um, and on the whole, uh, they found the feedback to be useful. The numbers vary depending on which article you're talking about, but it generally it's like in the low 40s for your average article. If it's the, um, uh, a controversial article like the Obama page, it might go down to the 20s. Um, but by and large, there's quite a bit of uh, useful feedback. Um, and these um, findings are consistent across a range of experiments. We tried different designs, different approaches, by and large, the readers are actually providing uh, civil, uh, thoughtful feedbacks a lot of the time. Um, and you can see here some sample comments. Uh, you know, they range for, from, uh, like for the, um, uh, sometimes they'll give you um, a little bit of information about whether they thought the article was uh, easy to understand. Like in the case of the Higgs boson, there was some confusion because it was a little bit cryptic. Uh, sometimes they'll correct um, a, a problem, uh, you know, an inaccuracy, and it's factual information. And of course, there's always <laughs> feedback that's not so useful. But generally, um, the kind of feedback you see at the bottom of the page is a, kind of a, more of a minority. Um, now, the next question want, uh, that we wanted to find out is, can we convert readers into editors through this process? So what you see here is the gradual engagement uh, process that we use. We start by asking you a simple question. Did you find what you were looking for? Then we encourage you to add a comment to uh, tell us more about uh, what you're thinking of this article. And then lastly, we give you a call to action, call to edit this article. And <clears throat> we found that this call to action can be actually pretty effective. And we tested a number of versions. One is the indirect call to edit that you just saw, which comes in after you post the feedback. And then another one is a direct call to edit, where we, in fact, instead, in place of the feedback form, we give you just this call. So here's what we found. Um, all the way here on the left is the control sample with no feedback form at all on the page. Uh, the second one is the indirect um, call to action, which comes in after you post the feedback. And we see that there's an increase about 22% of people 
who um, actually go on to edit the page, uh, which is good. Uh, and then on the, the direct uh, call to action, about 158% more than the control group um, go on to edit uh, a page. So these are new editors that are generated uh, through this process. So that's interesting, uh, and uh, certainly from a standpoint of conversion, uh, you can see that there's no cannibalization. That was one thing that we're worried about is, oh, what if people, instead of editing, go on and, uh, you know, end up uh, uh, posting feedback all the time? Well, you can see that the yellow bars are consistent across uh, all three experiments. We're not losing any um, editors. In fact, we're gaining some. Now, what about the productivity of those edits? Um, this is where we see that uh, when you post no feedback, the productivity is pretty good, but when you go with the direct call to action all the way on the right, it's less productive. Um, so there, there is a, a bit of a trade-off for the increase in volume. So, uh, you know, again, the good news is posting feedback converts many more readers into editors. There's no cannibalization. Uh, the direct calls to action uh, generate more conversions, but the indirect calls to action lead to more productive edits. So that's why we ended up with taking the indirect call to action. Question? Experienced editors, uh, as far as we can tell, are not using the article feedback tool a lot because they're already comfortable editing. Uh, but we'll see once we deploy it a little bit more widely if experienced editors will use the tool more. It's, right now, it's primarily aimed at readers. Question? Your definition of new editor was just do they, they, they edit that particular page? Do you also have a sense of whether these people stick around beyond that particular page? Um, what we do is we basically look at, as, as to whether or not um, the editor made, uh, no, whether the reader made an edit within 48 hours from the time that they posted feedback. And to measure productivity, we look to see whether the um, edit was reverted within a week from the time that um, they uh, made that first edit. Question? Um, could you go back to the previous slide just for a second? Sure. In the productive edits in that last column, how many of those green edits were from people who were in the yellow bar in the prior slide? In other words, it, does that represent only the people who arrived editing just because of new edits? Unfortunately, we don't have that information yet, but it's a really good question, and maybe that's something we can drill in on the next study. I was wondering if that would look yeah. much more unproductive. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, you know, again, you know, this is just uh, preliminary data. It's not final. But uh, the overall takeaways are th from this research are that, number one, feedback forms appear to be effective engagement tools. They make it easy for readers to participate, and they enjoy doing that. The comments, at least a good portion of the comments, appear to be useful to editors. And posting feedback appears to uh, convert uh, many readers into editors who otherwise might not have edited at all. Um, so, of course, there's a lot of open questions, you know, will editors actually use this feedback? Uh, is the monitoring required to filter inappropriate comments uh, going to be a bit of an issue? Can this lead to uh, readers and editors to collaborate more productively? We're not going to know the answers until we're fully deployed. Um, a couple things about uh, the community. We were very lucky that a lot of people participated uh, from the community in the development of this tool. In fact, uh, as many, if not more, community members were involved in the regular RC chats that we would have and uh, participated on the talk page. And we're really, really grateful to all the people who have been active contributors. And you may recognize some of their names here. Uh, and they generate all sorts of different ideas, you know, such as they wanted to uh, add a comment box, wanted to ask the question, did you find what you were looking for? And many more ideas that didn't make it in this release, but which we hope uh, we'll, uh, we'll get, get into that. And if you would like to uh, join the discussion, you can go to our main Wikipedia uh, talk page and, uh, and add your recommendations there as well. Um, and the, uh, the full system that we created together is actually pretty complex. It looks simple on, uh, on the outside, but we, we spent a lot of time making sure that each user group in our community, from the readers to the editors, the monitors, the oversiders, each had the right tools for them to participate in this workflow. Um, so uh, the overall impact, uh, we think, or we hope, 
of, of this tool is that it'll make it easier to improve Wikipedia, that it'll provide a useful on-ramp for readers, that uh, the tools uh, for editors will also be found to be useful, and most importantly, we hope that it'll create new ways for users to collaborate so that uh, readers and editors can work together, newbies and experienced people can help each other through this, uh, through this process. So we encourage you to try it out. Uh, just uh, type uh, WP colon AFT on the search box of any page on Wikipedia and you'll be able to read more about this and, uh, and, and take a look at it. And then I've uh, also added some links here where you can uh, learn more. Uh, we've got a video tour and a uh, tutorial for editors. And, uh, and of course, if you want to try it out and look at any of the pages that we just looked at, they're right here. And of course, feel free to contact me directly if you have uh, uh, any questions. All right, so uh, you over here. Yeah. Um, first, I want to congratulate you because this is, I think, the highest improvement in reader engagement of any one change that's been made in Wikipedia that I can remember by about an order of magnitude. And I thought we would get something good out of it. I didn't think it would be, the percentage would be so very high because our principal, I mean, we started with a user feedback tool. Anyone can edit a link, <laughs> which didn't, which apparently did not get us as far as we wanted. Um, I thank you. Wanted to ask you, though. I have no doubt that everyone in the almost everyone in the English Wikipedia is going to like this quite a bit. But did you? <laughs> There have been questions about projects getting approval of the English Wikipedia before significant deployment and before final deployment by the editors there. And how did you go about that? Uh, well, what we're doing now with all of the projects from the editor engagement group is try to start from the get-go, as soon as we start the project, to involve the community very regularly and very intensely. Um, so we have uh, uh, RSC chats, we have uh, uh, Skype calls, we have email, we have the talk page. There are so many channels um, in which we can collaborate with the community. As you just saw you know, from the slide where I was showing everybody's names, it's a very collaborative process. And every single project that we do in our product group from now on will be based on that. You can see the results. Uh, when you bring all these great minds together, you can really do some good work. And uh, you know, we, I used to do this when I was working at Apple, but now this is, we're doing it like 10 times more. Uh, and it's just so effective because you guys keep us honest. Uh, Are you ever going to do a RFC for actual deployment of the project? Yes, we do. I promise this. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I'm sorry I, I, if I misunderstood the question. But yes, you, you, we're doing RFC actually throughout the development itself, even before the deployment. Question over there. In the blue shirt. Do new entries in the article feedback log appear on the watch list? <laughs> it's a really good suggestion, and you're the third person to bring it up in a week, so it sounds like we're going to have to do this pretty quickly. Um, it, it, it's an excellent suggestion. I'm sorry it's not in this release, but uh, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, in, in, uh, as soon as I get back to work on Monday, I'm going to try to see if uh, there's any way that we can squeeze it in uh, for, this, uh, for the release in September. <laughs> Show of hands, how many people want this? <laughs> okay, all right. I'm convinced. <laughs> all right, uh, any other questions? Uh, hi, I, I'm Rex. Um, can I just uh, argue with your proposition or the metric that you used to determine the productivity? Because I, I personally wouldn't have used an IP's edit being reverted as a particularly meaningful metric for a, a, an edit being productive or not. So can I make a suggestion to you that when you do the evaluation on the next phase, you might have to look for something a little more sensitive as a, as a metric for determining whether an edit, is, an edit sorry, is productive or not. Because I think that the, the num what you got there looks so skewed to me that I'm, I'm, I'm very doubtful about whether that's a real measure that you're making in terms of the productivity. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, it's a very reasonable comment. These things are tough to measure. Uh, so we try to measure them in a variety of different ways, but your point is well taken that, you know, it's a little bit coarse. 
And uh, certainly we're not banking everything on that one uh, piece of data. And that's what we do is we do so much uh, metrics and so much data analysis that even if one data is wrong, some of the others can still steer us in the right direction. Uh, but the point is well taken. One last question. Just the slide again about the letters to get into it. The uh, which one? Yeah. This one? Yeah, Got it, yeah. WP colon AFT. Yeah, please try it out. Uh, you know, try the feedback tool and uh, try also going to the central uh, feedback page, you know, from the bottom of any feedback page, you know, click on the last link at the bottom and, uh, and then, you know, contact us, you know, either email us or go to the talk page and let us know what you think and how we can improve it. Uh, you know, this is the first release of this new tool, but uh, there'll be more down the line. Okay. The, thank you very much. I'll take your Thank questions you offline. Much. Okay, so good morning together. Uh, let me first introduce myself. <clears throat> I'm from the University of Applied Sciences in Bern, Switzerland. I'm a lecturer in business information systems, and I'm on a research project, which is called TAO, which you can see here on the first slide. Um, I'm going to talk about accessibility issues at Wikipedia, which is um, a study within that project. So I have a little agenda here. First, let me uh, say a few sentences about <coughs> the whole project itself. Um, next, I give a little context. What about um, the study is related to that project? And then I have uh, four points. First. Uh, let me tell about the goals of the study, then how we did it, so some kind of research agenda, then um, I give some results, uh, draw some conclusions and an outlook at the end. Okay, first the project itself um, deals with two central questions, um, namely how um, senior citizens or elderly people um, could be encouraged to participate in online communities. So that's um, one of the central questions of the project. And um, um, also, how can we boost collaboration? Um, from that, we have several goals, which I put on the slide here. Um, so the question is, how can we um, develop methods to encourage other people to participate? Um, what kind of new services could you imagine? But today, I will focus on the last point here. Um, how could we improve the user experience for these people using um, community platforms? And especially the study is on Wikipedia. So we don't deal with <coughs> other community platforms um, within the study here. OK, well, of course, there are um, wins for several um, groups of uh, people here, but I won't go into detail about this here now. Um, just a map here, that's a joint project financed by the European community. Basically, three countries are involved. You see here um, uh, companies and universities in Switzerland, Germany, and Netherlands. Okay, now let me come to the goals. Um, we wanted to see how good Wikipedia is at the moment with respect to accessibility issues. Um, on the other hand, we have a target group in our project, which is elderly users. So how does it fit together? Of course, these are different user groups. Um, however, they share common needs and requirements. Um, so we focused here on a recommendation from the World Wide Web Consortium about accessibility, which is called uh, WCAG. Um, that's a set of uh, criteria on uh, which you could test uh, websites against. Um, we took this in contrast to other research results which, uh, find, which found out um, needs for elderly, for elderly users because uh, that's in no way standardized or there is no common recommendation. There are several publi uh, uh, publish uh, publications on this. 
Um, but we had a study that there are about 30% of the requirements are the same for both um, user groups. That's why we focused on these accessibility studies. Okay, um, so the, um, besides the test, we wanted to give some recommendations for improvement um, in these cases where the criteria didn't match. And um, uh, last, we, uh, we like to have some implementation in Wikipedia, let's say improvements on the Wikipedia so that um, issues found could be improved in the current version. Okay, so first we identified the test methods. Uh, we found a group of test experts. We identified some tools for um, <coughs> having a look at the, the Wikipedia pages. Uh, next, there was a testing phase and a recording um, with an output of a test report, about 50 pages. Uh, that's accessible, it's published on our website. The link is in the presentation here. You can, you can uh, go to that. Um, but it's also important that you find someone who, um, um, who takes over the results and the recommendations and tries to implement that. That's, that cannot be done by ourselves because that's a, well, that community project called uh, Wikipedia here. Um, so um, the idea is here to, well, to stimulate for feature requests and bug requests so that uh, the community um, uh, takes on and probably makes some patches in Wikipedia. Okay, the idea is also to have some kind of access accessibility task force, a group of people here, probably from, uh, from this conference here as well, who help to go on in this direction. The results. Um, well, main result is the accessibility of the Wikipedia is quite good. Um, that's not that surprising. Um, our partner, Access for All in Switzerland, uh, tests every year hundreds of websites, um, and there are much more gimmicks on other web websites, uh, videos, uh, time-based uh, time uh, regions, and so on. Uh, Wikipedia is more conservative in that way, so um, several criteria um, um, uh, do well, do not really apply or there is, uh, there is no <coughs> feature in Wikipedia so that the criteria could fail. Okay, nevertheless, there is a whole list of um, issues which could be improved. And um, as another result, there are also recommendations for improvement. That is, the test uh, group and the test expert have uh, a lot of experience in that field. They do it since many years. And so there are recommendations for improvement which would hopefully improve that situation for accessibility. Um, basically, the recommendations fall into two groups. First, um, we could imagine improvements for the media wiki, so on the software, on the software side, so that the generated code is um, better for um, accessibility. But on the other hand, there are recommendations for the community let's say the authors, uh, a billion of people or so, um, which is more hard to implement because you have to educate the community in order to, ma uh, to make the, um, their uh, submissions more accessible. Um, well, as a, as a famous example is here that, uh, for example, uh, users with um, visual impairments um, cannot see the images and <clears throat> when someone is uploading a picture and gives no alternative representation, let's say describing text, then, um, for example, screen readers can read only the link of that image and nothing else. So, but in order to improve that situation, you have to encourage the community to do that, which is uh, not such an easy task. Okay, last, there are uh, suggestions on newer approaches. So we have, um, um, <clears throat> there is another, a working group on uh, rich internet applications, RIAs, you see the abbreviation here. Um, 
with HTML5, we have new possibilities, for example, defining landmarks in pages so that screen readers can better cope with that. Uh, it's better for orientation and navigation. Okay, next, I have several results slides here. Um, there is a list of issues. There is a, a so-called top 10 list as an excerpt. Um, also in the report, uh, I have three examples here. For example, um, there are often lists in uh, Wikipedia articles which are not um, implemented as HTML lists. So the human reader may read that as a list, but screen readers had to guess what it is. It's just a text standing there. Yeah? So <clears throat> uh, that's one of the issues. Then, for example, skip links, jumping from one location to another, um, are not always implemented by access keys. So some users um, cannot or will not or whatever use the mouse. And so uh, everything should be operatable by access keys. That's not the case at the moment. And um, <clears throat> then the topic with the semantic structuring. So putting landmarks and pages and so on. Okay, um, as a, on the bottom line, uh, MediaWiki issues um, or most of them could be solved if someone would um, take on the implementation. Um, but that depends on the prioritization, of course, of the developer community. Um, well, for the community issues, there are still ongoing discussions. So these recommend some of these recommendations are not really new. Um, uh, some are new, but some are not. And so there is an ongoing discussion how to cope at all with this um, with these problems. Okay, another result page. Um, we submitted the report to Wikimedia Germany. Um, there was an evaluation there. Uh, they went through all these points and gave their comments on our test results and recommendations. For example, this criteria is, uh, makes no sense to implement the other one well and so on. So <clears throat> the criteria list has comments. Um, uh, we posted it also to the Wikimedia Foundation here. There have been positive feedback and encouragement to go on with that. Um, next, Wikipedia Germany posted some patches on several issues in um, the Media Wiki. And um, recently, let's say two weeks ago and the, uh, the last months, uh, three um, patches have been uh, code reviewed and accepted. So it's, they are now online. Um, uh, users without uh, impairments or users um, that don't use screen readers or whatever will not notice that. So these improvements will not um, change the behavior of these pages, but uh, um, uh, tools uh, for accessibility, for example, screen readers and so on, um, have now a better chance to interpret what they, uh, or to um, to give a better interpretation to the user what is on the page. Um, well, I have three examples here. There is on the left side of the Wikimedia pages, you have this uh, collapsible navigation toggle. Yeah? So when you click on it, there is a submenu. And um, these, are now <coughs> these are now links. Before, these have not been links. Um, so that's an improvement. Then uh, captures um, have now labels, so that screen readers can say, OK, this is a capture. Um, and the visual editor has been added with um, keyboard accessible buttons, which has not been the case. So these are some of the improvements until now. OK, um, when we started with, the with this accessibility issues, um, we contacted several people um, um, and have been encouraged to go on in this work and in fact have been um, encouraged also to put some issues on the Wikimedia pages, on the media, on the meta wiki and so on. Um, for example, the hackathon at the beginning of this week had also some issues which has been posted from a research partner from Wikipedia, uh, a partner from Wikipedia Germany. So there are some issues which have been uh, dealt with. Okay, um, then we have uh, other work in this, in this direction. Um, we made a, 
uh, senior skin for Wikipedia, which is an experimental version. It's, it's also online, so uh, the complexity is reduced, and some of the uh, recommendations from this report are implemented there. Um, so with a special access code, you can try that out. Um, and um, as another result, this is upcoming, it's just starting. We have a student thesis which, which is um, uh, working on an authoring tool so that um, alternative representations, for example, when you upload images, um, um, so that this situation could be improved. Okay, so far uh, the presentations, so in case there are questions, suggestions, and so on, um, please, yeah. I didn't catch what you meant by authoring tool, could you just elaborate? Uh, authoring tool is, um, well, the way when you upload um, an article, uh, then you start a tool, okay, for authors. So, and uh, for example, you could imagine, um, it's not clear to everybody uploading an image that it could be necessary to give an alternative representation. You can, you can see a list of um, recommendations in Wikipedia, why it is necessary, uh, how to formulate text so that it is descriptive and so on, but um, you are not forced to read that. Yeah? So the to and uh, we think the tool should not um, force that somebody gives the text, but should encourage it. So for example, I could imagine you upload an image and for a few seconds it's, um, it's shown um, um, with, um, in, in a bad resolution so that you can imagine how people with uh, visual impairments would see that and then probably it's an effect, oh, probably it's a good idea to put in some text. Yeah, so that's one of the possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's realized in Wikipedia. You can, when you log in, you can choose between skins. Yeah, that's the situation. Yeah, we, we... And even for registered users, do you have any... I mean, not everyone knows about the presence of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, um, the point is this is an experimental skin just for trying out, so that, uh, for example, the development team, whoever that is, could see, oh, uh, maybe that's an idea for um, improving. Um, it's not meant for that um, regular users are using that skin. It's it's only um, an experimental version. Um, implementing three or four points of uh, our study. Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's great the work that you're doing with trying to make Wikipedia more accessible. I just have a comment about adding alternative text when you upload an image. Um, sometimes an image can be linked from many places and, the alt and it can be used in lots of different contexts. So the alternative text might be different in each context. Yes. How do you deal with that? Yeah, you are right. Um, I discussed that yesterday with a, um, with, with a member here. Um, so uploading um, an image could, be some, could have some default description, let's say. And when you use it in the article, you could, for example, give a more specific context-dependent um, uh, text. That, that's a possibility. Hmm? In the EXIF uh, thing of the image. No. EXIF? Yeah, the, the, those fields that say the, the name of the camera and so on. Well, I think we think of, uh, the, uh, of uh, tags which are sp um, specialized for doing that, for example, the alternative tag. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Zico van Dijk, the Netherlands. Um, in the Netherlands, I've seen Senioren Web. We have contact with them, but uh, the Dutch chapter thought we want to do it right, such a cooperation, or do not do it at all. In Germany, I have seen how much work it is to build up such a program and work with the elderly. 
and I had some experiences uh, at uh, people's universities. My problem was I've seen that those people are very committed and they have a great attitude about being serious and doing good work and they want uh, the ones to do it well. On the other hand, they have so many problems already with using the computer and the interface, using several tabs at the same time. Um, the, for example, Wikimedia Commons has now a new assistant or an upload visit and they forgot to use to, to enter a category. Well, to add a category for a picture simply about a castle in a German city, they needed like 40 minutes. And I'm afraid that we would need, so this was three lectures over three days, I think we need much longer time to teach us people, and especially we need serious teaching aids. And when I try to tell, uh, to talk about that with my colleagues in Germany, there is no much appreciation for that idea. They think it's, it's not necessary, while with the elderly people I see there's a big urge for good teaching aids, like a usual a textbook or something like that to support them learning Wikipedia. Um, how much thought you have given in your uh, project about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I go back to the whole project, this Tao project. Um, it, we come from two ends. I talked today about the, the end from the user experience, uh, which makes about only 10 to 20 percent of the project. The, the most part of the project um, um, deals with um, how to encourage elderly users to, uh, to participate. That's what I not talked about today. But uh, tomorrow there will be, by the way, it's here, tomorrow there will be a workshop here exactly on the question my colleague will my, my two colleagues here will uh, be in it so these questions will be um, uh, discussed tomorrow then so but there is there is a lot of work in our project with exactly that question yeah well, you can probably hear me without it but uh, yeah hi my name's Rex um, yeah and I've got a couple of questions okay. the first one is if um, if our mission in Wikipedia is to imagine a world in which every single human being has access to the sum of all human knowledge, why isn't accessibility one of our pillars? And the second thing I'd like to just mention to you is that have you, I'd like to ask the question really, have you actually engaged in some of the processes in different Wikipedias in order to try to raise the profile of the issues of accessibility. Because I don't believe that until we have accessibility of articles is something that's required by, say, for example, our featured article process, that we won't get accessibility taken seriously within our own English Wikipedia. Okay, in the project we take the design for all principle that means um, it makes no sense to have different versions for different user groups. Um, and yes, uh, answer to your, to your questions, we have contact to, um, to people of the development community here. They encouraged us and so um, those designing the new, um, um, uh, new user interface, for example the Athena project and so, know about that study, uh, gave us feedback and hopefully, the, uh, uh, for your first question, I, I cannot uh, personally do something because that's a question to the whole Wiki, uh, Wikipedia community. But um, hopefully they will adopt uh, these recommendations and um, so that accessibility hopefully is not a special issue but is uh, a basic, basic uh, feature, basic requirement of it. Yeah. They didn't. <laughs> Okay. Good. So if there are no more questions, and thanks a lot for coming and discussing. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. My name is Robin, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about creating new language editions of Wikipedia. But actually, not all, only Wikipedia. It's about all uh, Wikimedia projects that have different language versions. But of course, Wikipedia uh, is the most important project. 
uh, or at least the most known. So um, everybody knows our vision that we want to have all knowledge, all knowledge available to everyone. And uh, that, of course, implies having that knowledge available in most or all of the world's languages, which is about 7,000 according to the ISO standard. Um, and we have currently about 280 Wikipedias, so we still have um, room for improvement. Um, so how do we expand to more languages? Um, I'm a... Uh, so I'm a volunteer and I'm active on Incubator. Uh, who here does not know what Incubator is? Okay, a, a few. So Incubator is a, a website um, where anyone can start a new langu language version of Wikipedia or another Wikimedia project. Um, I'll just quickly show Incubator, the main page. So incubator.wikimedia.org. But the internet connection is not so well, so. <laughs> well, I'll just continue. In the early days, uh, back when I didn't know of Wikipedia, um, there was a very easy uh, button anyone could click to um, so that the wiki would be created instantly, uh, or at least um, just the developers would create the wiki, and there was no formal approval or bureaucracy. Um, and over time, uh, a process developed. Um, people would uh, do a vote on Meta on whether the wiki should be created, etc. And they started a few pages on on Meta before the wiki was actually created. Uh, that was a start of Incubator. Um, so instead of creating a few pages on Meta, they uh, started on Incubator. Um, and then in 2006, Incubator got created. So that's where people now uh, start a new version. And also the language committee was founded, which uh, uh, has the task of approving the language versions. Um, and in 2007, I uh, found out about Incubator because of uh, Ancient Greek. I found that there was a uh, test wiki on Incubator of Ancient Greek, so that's why I got involved with um, all of this. Um, there are a few reasons why there is uh, a formal process of approval. Um, uh, first of all, because you need an uh, objective reason uh, what is a language and what isn't what is not a language uh, the language committee uh, is um, based, based itself on the ISO 639 standard of uh, a lang list of language codes with uh, uh, what is a language um, and you need to prevent uh, fake projects in the past there was a Siberian Wikipedia which is not a real language, it was a fake project. And um, there, are, there are, of course, more exotic languages which not a, not a lot of people speak, so you need to verify if the language on Incubator is really written in the language it is said to be. So the language committee uh, tries to verify with external experts whether uh, the language is indeed that language. And you need some um, quality control uh, in the sense that um, the interface of the site, the MediaWiki interface, needs to be translated to that language. Otherwise, if uh, people speaking that language go to the wiki and they say they see the interface in English, it's not so um, not so good. And um, you need to support that language. Um, and the localization team of the Wikimedia Foundation um, mostly does that by um, making uh, funds available uh, for um, other scripts 
and input methods to be able to write in a script. Um, so, and before uh, a wiki gets created, there needs to be a certain amount of pages to, to start with. You, um, instead of just starting with a blank Wikipedia, you need to have some content already. And of course, you need active contributors to that Wikipedia because in the past, the wikis were um, often became inactive when they got created. So you need to be able to ensure that the wiki will s more or less stay active. Um, and um, another reason is that for small, very small languages, um, they probably won't um, get an active Wikipedia at all. So, but we still um, would need to give them a chance to uh, share knowledge in that language. So that's why um, Incubator um, could be a definitive place for uh, those small languages. Um, So uh, in the past, there was um, a formal um, or an, a vote at Meta uh, whether the wiki should be created. But so nowadays, um, it shouldn't really be a vote, but um, more or less a, uh, a request to create that subdomain. So it's not a vote on Meta. Um, incubator is for developing uh, a real wiki. It's it's a real uh, so either to become a separate subdomain or to stay there for very small languages. And of course, anyone who speaks a certain language can start immediately on incubator. You don't have to request it on Meta. You can, anyone can start it. Um, so, and I've been also busy with improving uh, the usability of incubator so that people can easily find um, a, a wiki uh, a Wikipedia in their language, uh, whether it exists as a separate subdomain or on incubator. Um, so in the past there was a static page of this wiki does not exist and nowadays those subdomains redirect to incubator. Um, and a few days ago um, uh, we added to the portal page wikipedia.org a input box where you can enter a language name and it will take you to that um, subdomain or to incubator. So, uh, yeah, I would show it, but. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> so, if you want to search for a uh, language version, you just can enter here a language name and um, to take you to that wiki or to incubator. Um, for example, there's this wiki uh, in Brahui. So it will take you to that main page and anyone who speaks that language can start editing there. Um, so I hope this is um, um, an improvement to easily find a language version or at least the test wiki on incubator. Um, and for languages that have not yet a test wiki at Incubator, oops, it will show um, that wasn't there yesterday, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, knew. I searched for a. Um, <laughs> that's strange. I searched for a info page uh, without a test wiki to show the info page, but that's strange. <laughs> huh, that was something else then. Well, I showed in another project. So, for example, Wikibooks. Um,
I'll continue with the presentation. <laughs> so um, I wanted to show the info pages, so uh, it will give you information with the link to, uh, to easily start with a new language version or to search for other language versions. And I, um, for uh, usability on incubator, I introduced as a kind of page content language, which a, um, depending on the, so on incubator, each page starts with a prefix like wb slash and then the language code. So depending on the language code, it will parse each page in that language, which is a software improvement that also benefits other projects of MediaWiki. So I'm also, uh, I also mo more or less became a developer. Um, and um, the documentation on Incubator is also uh, translated, but of course, um, as with most open source stuff, documentation is not so well. Um, and I have other things in development, like a first step special page, which, which, will, um, which sh should guide you through the process of starting uh, a test wiki. And um, currently, all missing wikis redirect to incubator, but it should be in the future extended to all language. Yes? Yeah, of course. Oh, great. For the records, uh, it, he just mentioned that the English Wikipedia across 4 million articles. <laughs> or edits, right? So um, in the future, all um, lang also domains with language codes um, will redirect to incubator. So uh, I hope that will also be, um, for example, if you start a wiki in Brahui, um, you cannot inter you cannot add interwiki links from other Wikipedias to it. Um, so in the future, that should be possible. Um, so currently, the request process is on Meta um, with a yeah. I would like to show it, but the internet connection does not really work. It's a long list of all uh, requested language uh, subdomains. Um, so before Wiki gets uh, created, apart from um, incubator, where you need to start um, with contributors for um, um, when it starts uh, activity, you also need the translations, which uh, you can start on translatewiki.net. Um, and in the future, uh, there should probably be uh, a better request system at Meta. Uh, and it would, would be nice if there was an automatic request system, because currently it's uh, not really um, easy for newbies to request a new subdomain. And uh, for small languages, um, there is also a need for language support. And as I mentioned, the Wikimedia Foundation um, develops uh, web fonts and input methods for uh, languages. Um, but there's also an issue that uh, a lot of languages are written in multiple scripts or orthographies. Uh, so that's an issue that I often encounter on Incubator. Um, MediaWiki does have a language converter for this, but it's not uh, well maintained. Um, so hopefully that would change in the future as well. And also, um, a lot of languages do not have um, orthography, so that's also a problem. Um, so thank you for listening. That was my presentation. Does anyone have questions? OK. Thank you so much. I'm Peter Gold from Namibia, and I'm actually pushing couple of languages at the same time now. Uh, I had hoped for a bit more of a concrete idea uh, of the criteria as to when uh, a new language can be started. You say, all right, number of active editors, a uh, couple of articles. Can you, can you give uh, a 
bit more of a of a figure to that. How many articles? Forty, hundred. Um, there's, uh, <laughs> there's not really a requirement for number of articles, but it's um, it's more of number of editors. We try to have um, uh, about three active editors for a few months, um, and so when there are a few active editors, then it can be uh, approved. Okay, uh, sorry for making that, putting uh, bringing this into a dialogue, but uh, active editors like. 100 edits a month, or 10, or 1,000? <laughs> How active? Um, well, there is a, a, there's a tool, and it, it counts, I think, um, only a few tens of edits. Uh, then it will count you as an active editor. So it doesn't have to be really a lot of edits to be counted as an active editor. Yeah, activity is mostly low on these uh, small language versions, so. Yeah, so if I make 30 edits a month, one a day, am I active or am I not active? Yeah, sure, I am. Yeah, I think you would be active. considered as active. Okay, okay since I, uh, anybody else has questions now? Uh, hello, Robin. Thank you for your uh, contribution. I'm uh, very sympathetic of small or weak or uh, languages that are impaired in one way or the other. I could imagine that by now we have more or less for every viable language a Wikipedia language version and that other languages who didn't make it up to now maybe in general have so big problems that we uh, cannot expect in the next future that there will be uh, a significant, a significant uh, move for new language versions. What do you think? Um, yeah, that's, there are only um, a couple of new language versions that are created each year, so indeed um, a lot of uh, the most viable languages already have a Wikipedia so far. So that is why um, I suggested that Incubator would be a definitive place for the small languages that are not viable enough for a separate Wikipedia, so that they at least have a chance to, um, if someone is, if there is only one person that contributes in that language, that at least has a place on Wikimedia to share knowledge in that language. I know that um, the company that makes Rosetta Stone has made uh, versions of their program available to communities of uh, small struggling languages, uh, in particular Native American languages. And uh, many of these communities are, you know, have active uh, organizations that are trying to keep their languages alive and I'm wondering if there's been any kind of cross fertilization with the incubator in terms of uh, languages that are that are uh, struggling to you know teach their young people the language so that it remains a living language so you mean cooperation with uh, other organizations uh, for these languages yeah. Um, there were a few um, um, projects with that, but and I haven't. There hasn't really been any um, uh, successful, or that has really started. So, uh, in f so not really actually. But it would be really great if there was cooperation uh, with such organizations um, to help these languages. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for all that you've contributed. Uh, this is a very large, sprawling organization, and the meeting is a chance to meet people. So would you want to share any groups that you've made very happy <laughs> or perhaps frustrated for want of better tools? or your own hopes for the larger consequences of the work you do, which we all support. Thank you. Thank you. 
or what, what's your uh, what's your question actually, or what? Do you have any case studies, any successes, any happiness you'd like to share? Um, well, uh, on incubator we are only with uh, a few active uh, administrators, um, so uh, it's sometimes difficult to try to deal with. Um, um, problems of various uh, all kinds of languages um, so yeah sometimes I, I I I'm mostly the only person who tries to deal with such issues on incubators so yeah it would be great if there was more uh, coordination uh, with uh, um, linguistic issues uh, for for languages that want to start uh, Wikipedia so there's uh, an active, uh, several active um, Berber projects, but um, um, these are written in either Berber script or um, Latin script, and there's often issues with the Berber script. Um, so I try to help them, but it's not uh, easy. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I have a few different questions, but I'll just pick one for the um, in interest of time. I've been reading through several different languages on Wikipedia, um, you know, small and large, and I've been noticing that there are many, many small languages that are dying languages, so to speak. Um, you know, they're um, spoken or used by older generations, and uh, we kind of have to partner with these senior citizens and their communities in order to keep these languages alive. So it really, it, it takes a monstrous effort to keep these languages precious from dying. So um, living languages, if not used or perpetuated, do, can die off. And so we want to um, keep these alive and in our community, even if they are small in number. So um, there was, uh, we have lost ancient empires and their languages over the decades. Um, so this is just something to think about. I found this to be very interesting. And I, I was just wondering if you had thoughts on these dying languages or um, languages that can go by the wayside. Um, so indeed, um, I would very much li uh, like to help these dying languages, um, but yeah, um, there's not really a lot of coordination to uh, help these dying languages. So um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm very much interested, but I. And I would like to help, but yeah, there's not really any current project uh, to help with that. What kind of coordination do you need in order to help such dying languages? Um, um, I don't, uh, I have not really uh, a concrete idea or proposal, but um, um, indeed to partner with other organizations, for example, um, um, that are active in helping these uh, languages, um, and with other interested people, uh, Wikimedians, um, that want to help these languages. Um, because cu currently we only have the language committee, but it only approves new languages, so it would be nice if, for example, the language committee would um, also uh, try to coordinate um, uh, the efforts of various organizations. Is, that Is there any page or location on the website where people can go to volunteer in order to start up some type of coordination process? Um, well, not really, so 
that's in fact a bit what I would like to have see uh, changed so that there was um, a place where uh, people could coordinate things. So currently on Incubator there is a kind of um, um, a community portal where people can post questions or proposals or ideas, but it's not really uh, a good way for, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah there, you can start one there. I think so. Start yeah. Start a page and just go with it. That's it. There is, for example, a coordination for uh, Canadian Aboriginal languages, which is one of the uh, various proposals or ideas. So in, um, so that's what a bit what I mean with coordination. Coordination between proposals like this one, um, instead of several people that are interested and several ideas and efforts, if you know what I mean. Uh. Yeah, I think we are um, running short of time. Thank you very much. And um, just a quick note on uh, what you had up as Narayam, the input method. This was the input method Narayam was developed originally for the um, Malayalam Wikipedia, which used a transliterational scheme. So if you have a language that does not have, um, it does not really use a Latin, Latin keyboard, but if you want to use it for a transliterational method, you could always um, use that. I mean, that you can always build on top of it. Um, Junaid from Malayalam Wikipedia actually wrote that using the uh, Mori scheme that is very common in Malayalam Wikipedia, just to, for everyone's understanding. OK, thank you. So if everyone can go quickly grab, grab the co uh, coffee and come back. Uh, we can start with our next sessions. Thank you.